Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Convention time is a blessing time. I say it's a revival time. It's a time to move forward in everything, particularly in evangelism and soul winning. Praise the Lord. Uh, brethren, like I mentioned to us uh, during the prayer session, if you look at our program, we have almost all the days of this program, there's something or another about soul winning or evangelism. And we want to just stop talking about it every time. What do we want to do? Do it. Do it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, in our midst today, we have uh, some brethren from Revive Texas. Um, we, one of the sisters in my church introduced me to them, and I said, let me check them out. And uh, it turns out they were really, really helpful to us in evangelism. We learned a lot from them as we, one of the challenges I first received was when we went out for evangelism, they all came with their children. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Typically when we go, we leave our children at home. Amen. But then when we went, they came with their little ones and everybody. I said, he said, yeah, they too have to do evangelism. They have to serve God. They have to learn it from now. I said, that's wonderful. Amen. Amen. And then as we went, I saw that uh, we went to Waterburger. Nobody challenged us. Said, this is business. Don't come here. And then we went to what? All the businesses, we actually went inside there. People were eating, and then we were preaching to them. So I said, this is something I'm learning from them. And, by the, and the tools they use in evangelism, very unconventional, but great, great tools. And so I have the pleasure today of uh, introducing to you Brother Jason Evans. Amen. Amen. And Brother Wade Aaron, come on here and share with us about Revive Texas. We want to know more about your ministry and see how uh, you can be helpful to us. God bless you. Uh, so those of you that, I think some of you guys have those Bibles back in the back. Uh, if you guys want to open up those cases... I'm going to have Jason here uh, talk, but uh, if you guys want to go ahead and start passing those out, you just have to open the box, and then you have some bands. There should be plenty for everybody here. Uh, so, um, yeah, if you guys could help them out. And so I uh, just want to make that announcement. Make sure everyone gets a band and a Bible. All righty. Good morning. It is such an honor and a privilege to be with you this morning. Uh, thank you, Pastor Joseph, for inviting us and allowing us to share with you what we've seen God do. Uh, my name is Jason Evans. I live in Fort Worth. Uh, this is one of a team member with me, Wade Aaron, and he lives in Louisville. And we're part of Revive Texas. Revive Texas is a ministry that's under a bigger umbrella called Time to Revive. Time to Revive has several different teams. We have an international team that is in Spain right this second. We have a global team that does all of the national uh, Jerusalem prayer breakfasts, the official Jerusalem prayer breakfast that's sponsored by the Knesset in Israel. Uh, if that happens anywhere around the world, our team facilitates that, host it. But we also have teams all across the United States and different states. We have teams in uh, Minnesota, Revive Minnesota, Revive Ohio, Revive Florida, Revive Wisconsin, Revive Mississippi, Revive Texas, and there's a few more that I'm forgetting, I'm sure, Revive Florida. So we would love to connect you with a team in your state. So a little bit about what we do is we believe that Jesus is coming back soon. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We believe Jesus is coming back soon. Yeah. Right? And we were in Ephesians this morning. In Ephesians chapter uh, 5 and verse 14, you, you don't have to turn there. I'll read it. 
It says, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you life. He, he's talking to the church. There's a statistic that says that only 1% of all people that claim they are Christians will ever lead someone to Jesus. Get that. Only 1%. Of everyone that claims to be a Christian will ever actually lead someone to Jesus. That revival ain't going to come like that. Right? That's not acceptable. So our mission as Revive Texas is to equip the saints, equip the body of Christ for the return of Christ. Part of that is we got to pray and seek God's face, right? Yeah. We, we got to pursue him, Right? But the other part of that is Matthew 28, the Great Commission. He says, go. What does he say? Go. go. Is he talking to Pastor Joseph? Yes. Him, yes, but all of us too, right? I have four kids. You've probably seen them kind of cutting up a little bit here in the middle. Listen, who, who has any children in here? Yeah, well, you're probably like me. When I tell my children to go, I mean go. Come on. Do you know what I'm talking about? When he tells us to go, he means it. That's not a request. When I tell my son, go take out the trash, that's not when he feels like it. It's now. Go. Right? So Jesus is calling us to go. And so we, we've been, uh, Revive Texas was birthed out of a 50-day revival that took place here in the DFW area. 50 days. Every day, we got up in the morning. We prayed together. We worshiped together. We did some training, which my friend Wade is about to do for you here in just a second. We went out into the community and were the hands and feet of Jesus and showed the love of Jesus out there. We would come back at lunchtime. We would hear some testimonies about what God did. We would pray together, we would do some more training, and then we would go into community again. Then we would come back that night, have some dinner, and have a service. And then we would do it again the next day, and the next day, and the next day for 50 days. During that time, we've seen right at 3,000 people give their life to the Lord in the DFW area. Yeah, praise God. So since then, we've been invited to six other uh, cities or uh, regions of Texas, uh, and we we're about to, uh, last year we were in Abilene, Texas. Who's ever heard of Abilene, Texas? We were in Abilene, Texas for eight days. We saw 663 people give their life to the Lord. Amen? We're about to be in a small town out in West Texas. It's called Jim Ned Valley. It's just a, it's a cluster of little small towns of like 350 people. There's three or four of them. Small town. We're going to be there uh, this month, the 18th, 19th, 20th, uh, 21st, and 22nd, Wednesday through a Sunday. And we're going to do the same thing, right? But the deal is, it's not about evangelists, right? The evangelist's uh, job is to equip. So it's not about us reaching 663 people. It's about equipping the saints to go out there and equip the saints, right? Equip and, and share the gospel, Right? So my friend Wade, I believe he's going to give you some more testimonies. He's also going to uh, show you the tools that we use, simple tools. How many know what's the number one thing that prevents someone from sharing their faith? Does anybody know? Just yell it out. The number one thing. Fear. Fear. Exactly. So we're going to give you a quick little training, and we'll give you some tools to kind of alleviate that fear that says, hey, this is easy. I know it's easy because my children... Six, eight, and ten can do it. If they can do it, you can do it, right? And then Wade is also going to invite you to partner with us in something that we're doing. It's called Go 2020, and we really need your help, okay? So, Mr. Wade. You guys doing all right today? Yeah. You guys doing all right? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. You know, I'm still trying to wake up. My wife just woke up. She just texted me, thanks for making breakfast. Well, we're excited to be here. Uh, like Jason said, our desire is to equip you. Uh, I'm going to do that in a little bit, but I'm going to share a couple of testimonies. But what we just read in Ephesians is when we were talking about praying for the saints. 
And what did we do? We prayed. The same thing here. A lot of times when we, when we hear of equipping of the saints, it's not meant just to, to hear about being equipped and then, and then we go outside the four walls and then we forget what we learned. But that's what happens a lot of times. But our desire is to give you some practical tools. And so like Jason said, uh, those 50 days when we came here, we saw God move in a powerful way. We're training everyday believers like some of you in this room. But also we go into schools, we go into businesses. Uh, I've seen it where God is, when we were in Abilene, we had the open door to go into 40 different school events. We preached the gospel right in the middle of the school day. Uh, And in that time, in the matter of four days, 1,800 students heard the gospel. But the thing is, is that that doesn't come because we're just, uh, we're sitting at home and hoping God shows up in our city. It happens when people like you take courage and overcome your fear and go and pray for somebody. You step outside. For some of you, it might just simply be today after you hear what we share. You may walk out of here. You go to lunch or you, you go talk to your neighbor. And in the process, you may just simply say, how can I pray for you? That might be step one for some of you. Step two, you might tell them that Jesus loves them. But then after you, you overcome some of those fears, in the process, we have these tools. And, and we've seen it, everything from... I shared the gospel with a guy recently, and he originally told me, he said, Sir, I walked him through these five verses that I'm going to walk you through. And he looked at me, he said, I'm not going to give you lip service, nor am I going to give God lip service. Isn't that an honest answer? And he says, "Uh, I'm just not going to, I'm not going to give my life to Jesus. I'm just going to let you know. Well, a month later, I happened to see him again. He comes up to me, he's weeping, and he says, I've been weeping. I've been thinking about committing suicide every day since I talked to you. He goes, I need to get my life right with Jesus. He gave his life to Jesus. He got baptized that same day. And now he's in a, he's in a discipleship program since that day. Amen. Amen. Sometimes when you share, you share the gospel. And when you share, you see them give their lives to the Lord right then. Sometimes it's the next month. Sometimes it's a couple of days later. Sometimes it's a year later. And so... Our desire is to equip you to go so that 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 statistic, that the percentage of people that are not sharing the gospel begin to share the gospel. And after I train and I share a little bit, I do want to pray for the fear of man to break off some of you. Because I believe the body of Christ is gripped by the spirit of fear. And when you're gripped by the spirit of fear, you stay in your seat and you go to church on Sundays and you you hear that you're someone like me and you never overcome your fear to talk to your neighbor. And I believe today some of you will encounter the Holy Spirit and go. But also some of you will be empowered to go reach your communities. Some of you will be empowered, whether you're from different parts of the nation. You'll go back to your cities. You'll get stirred. And and maybe you'll invite us or you'll work with some of our team. Or maybe you'll just go and see God bring revival in your own community. Who knows? And so just a simple thing. Something that we always say is, how can we pray for you? Does everyone have a Bible? Raise the Bibles that we gave you. If you got a Bible, raise your hand that we gave you. They're pretty cool little Bibles. Um, but it's a simple tool. Uh, all you got to do is you simply ask someone how you can pray for them. And after you pray for them, okay, because here's the thing. We want you to pray for them right then and there. Don't, you don't have to pray long. Just pray a simple prayer. After you pray, uh, just say, hey, can I give you this band? Does everyone have one of the bracelets or bands? Most of you. Some of the guys here in the front don't. When you give them the band, here's my deal for the longest time. I struggle to transition into the gospel. What what do I say? Well, these bands, hey, this is a reminder that someone prayed for you today. And then if you look at the bands in the Bibles, what, what do you notice? They have colors and they match. And all I do is I have the Bible in my back pocket and I just say, hey, can I explain these these colors real quick? Sure. You'll be surprised how many times people will let you explain them. And so if you put your finger on number one real quick, it's the yellow verse. If you put your finger there, you'll see a verse that's highlighted. And what you see there is you, all you got to do is just say, hey, can you read that verse real quick? And you get them to read it. And then you simply say, hey, what does that verse mean? And they give you all kinds of responses. But yellow just represents sin. Okay? And so it's getting them to recognize that everybody sins. Uh, And so you get them to read. There's a verse in Psalms. It says, the law of the Lord converts the soul. If you get caught up and fearful of what you're going to say, know that the law of the Lord, the word of the Lord is going to convert their soul. 
you'll watch it. As they read, sometimes people's countenances begin to change. I actually know a story of a guy that was on drugs. In the moment, someone was sharing the gospel with him. He was high as a kite. As he started reading the word, he sobered up in the moment. He walked through the five verses and gave his life to the Lord. I'll repeat that. The guy was on drugs. He began to read the word, these five verses. After the second verse, he sobered up. He listened to the next three verses and gave his life to the Lord. That's the power of the word. And so number one just represents sin. You just get them to read it. And so yellow sin. What's yellow? Say it with me. Yellow? Sin. All right, then you would go to number two. And when you see there, there's another verse. You get them to read that. And as they read that, you, uh, you process it with them. And so black just represents death. Okay? So what's black? Death. Black? Death. Yellow? Sin. Black? Death. And then red's another verse. And once again, you get them to read it. Uh, just... So it takes time. You get them to process it. And so red represents love. It's the love of Christ. And so red is? Love. Red is? Love. All righty. Yellow? Sin. Black? Death. Red? Love. Red? Love. love. All right. And then blue represents faith. And so you're getting them to process that you're not saved by all the good things that you do in life. So whether you're talking to a Muslim, you're talking to a Hindu, Whatever, you're talking to all an atheist or you're talking to someone that believes they're saved by the good things they do. You can connect with them and say, no, no, no. What's this verse say? You're saved by grace through faith. Not, nothing you can boast of. Oh, okay. And so blue just represents faith. All right, so what's blue? Faith. Blue? Faith. And the last one, green, you process it with them. It's on the verse. It's on the band. And it represents life. Um, and so it's getting to understand that Jesus, believing the fact that he rose from the grave and also confessing with mouth, Jesus is the only way. He is the Lord. And so uh, green is representing life because you, after you process this one, you say, have you ever made Jesus the Lord of your life? A simple question you, after you get to the fifth verse is, ask them, have you ever made Jesus the Lord of your life? What's the question? Have you ever made Jesus the Lord of your life? And green represents life. What's green? What was yellow? Sin. Black? Death. Red? Love. Blue? Faith. Green? Life. Blue was faith. Green is life. Orange isn't on the band just because it's talking about new life, the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, and when you get there, you process with them the Holy Spirit and that new life in 2 Corinthians 5.17, if they give their lives to the Lord, and you can use that accordingly. Uh, but I encourage you. How many of you know what, at least one person that's far from God? We probably, hopefully, all at least know one person, because if not, you're living in the church too much. <laughs> maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's a neighbor, maybe it's somebody that you know. Just like you guys did earlier, you prayed. You prayed for, for the saints. But also, let's pray for the laborers, because that's what Jesus said to do, but also pray for that lost family member or that lost coworker. Maybe it's your city. But also, the challenge now is to go and share. I did a really fast training, but just go and share. And we've done this all across the nation. Uh, we, I think of another story where I was actually headed to, uh, I was headed to Wisconsin. We have a team in Wisconsin. Anybody here from Wisconsin? Anybody? Oh, yeah, guy right there. So I was headed to Janesville, Wisconsin. And in the process of me being headed to Janesville, Wisconsin, we actually have a baptismal truck that's, uh, that's on wheels. I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, uh, but it's a, it's a, it's a truck. It's a box truck, and in the, in the inside of the box truck, it's a baptismal tank. All right? So, in the process, we're driving to Wisconsin, and uh, I, I see these guys at a restaurant. We start talking to them. I walk through the five verses. The guy gives his life to the Lord. After he gives his life to the Lord, I say, what do you want to be baptized? We got this truck in the parking lot. He goes inside the restaurant, changes in the bathroom, comes back to the parking lot, and gets baptized in the parking lot. I tell you those stories because I know that God's in the move, and I know God wants to use you, and some of you, God wants to connect us today to maybe connect with you with some of our teams across the nation, across the state of Texas. Maybe you're in a different part of the state of Texas, and we'd love to partner with you. We've only been to about six regions in the state of Texas. We just look for three words, humility, unity, and hunger among the churches. The first one's humility, the second one's unity, and the third one's hunger. 
We truly believe that when you see those things, repentance happens. We believe that the church awakens and says, there needs to be a change in my own life, there needs to be a change in my city. And so that's just a basic training, but along with that, we got a big deal coming up. Uh, we're partnering with several ministries across the nation, and actually across the globe, uh, across the nation in May of 2020. Uh, what, what point of the year? May 2020. In May of 2020, all month, there's a collaboration of ministries, and you, you may just want to jump into this as well. Uh, if you go to Go2020, that is go2020.world, okay, so go2020.world, you can find out more how to get involved. But we as a ministry are partnering with these guys, and the vision is across the month of May, all of these ministries are collaborating, and the desire is to share the gospel with one billion people across the globe in the month of May. Across the United States, the vision is to share the gospel with 100 million people. Amen. That doesn't mean that all these people are going to give their lives to the Lord. It's saying, hey, let's go and let's share together. And the vision is that 100,000 people agree to do this, and at least every person of those 100,000 share with 10 people in the month of May. If you think about it, that could have a ripple tide effect across this nation, across the globe. There are some big ministries across the globe that are partnering. Uh, there are some ministries here locally that are large, like YWAM, Campus Crusade, across the nation, Christ for All Nations. Uh, there are ministries that are saying, hey, we're collaborating together to reach the world. And so we, as Revive Texas and Time to Revive, we've actually, Time to Revive has been a ministry for 70, uh, for not 75 years, for 12 years. And in those 12 years, we actually have teams in 75 different cities across the nation. And so in those 75 cities, we're relaunching them all. And so Pastor Joseph, will, will, I'm sure Jason's discussed a little bit. We, here in DFW, we're relaunching what we did, not 50 days, but we're saying, hey, maybe we do a two- or three-day outreach. Maybe we relaunch this and we equip people. And so our desire is to see God awaken the church to the created value that she is. Because like the pastor had you say earlier, look at your neighbor and tell them you're beautiful. A lot of times what happens is we look at each other and we look at the body of Christ and we see our flaws. We see our weaknesses. And sometimes with evangelism, it can be a weakness. And here's what I heard a guy named Ron Hart Bonke. Everybody heard of a guy named Ron Hart Bonke before? Yes. Ron Hart Bonke says, one leg is pray, the other leg is preach. If we're only walking on one leg, we'll miss the whole concept. We're just praying and we're, we're limping around. If we're only preaching, we're only walking on one leg. But we must be functioning in both legs where we're praying and we're preaching. And I believe as we go into May, as you go back to your cities, as you begin to pray, as you begin to preach, you'll see God move. But it's overcoming that fear and it's saying, hey, God's doing something and he wants to use me. He doesn't want to just use my pastor, but he wants to use me. That's a big thing that you have to overcome because we are the saints. We are the body of Christ. Look at your neighbor and tell him God wants to use you. Wants to use you. Tell your other neighbor God, God, wants God wants to use you. I'll tell you one last story. Sometimes, just to be honest, when you do, actually I'll tell you two stories. When you do what you do here, if you're the one that presses the button, you get somebody into a school to share the gospel. Sometimes here in the United States, you can't get a little pushback. The guy that opened up all those doors in the LCAs over in, uh, in all the schools in uh, Abilene, the 40 different school events, he actually got laid off for a month. They said uh, the superintendent was a Christian, but they still laid him off. But I used to be a math teacher, and I used to pray for my students all the time. Several times they would try to let me go, and I would share my testimony, and they said, Mr. Aaron, this old Jesus thing you can't keep doing. But you know what? You're a good teacher, so we can't let you go. They ultimately reinstated the, the, the guy that opened up the doors after about a month because he's a, good LC, he's a good director of what he does. If you're doing your job with excellence, they'll want you to stay around, though they don't completely agree with your Jesus thing. I'm confident there are people in this room, whatever you do in life, if you do your job with excellence and you proclaim the name of Jesus with no, no fear, though there might be pushback, they'll look at you and they'll say, well, I don't know what to do with you. It's just like with Joseph. He, he, if you think about Daniel, you think about these guys in the Bible, God is with you just as much as he was with, was with them. 
And so the last story with that is we were one time recently, about a year and a half ago or so, I was in West Texas. I got the opportunity to share the gospel at a Chevy dealership. The local pastor, uh, her husband owned the Chevy dealership. And uh, we, we went in, we shared with about five staff members. And the, the owner, which is the, the pastor's husband, was there that day. And as we shared, uh, I thought that uh, we shared the gospel. Well, I thought we, we asked everyone where they were at. We said, have you made Jesus Lord? Have you made Jesus Lord? Because what's the question after you say after you walk through the five verses? Have you, have you ever made Jesus Lord? That's a fearful question for a lot of people, but, but ask it. So we went around, we asked the five people, and all of a sudden the owner of the, the place said, no, I've never actually done that. I said, what do you do you want to today? He says, I do. His wife was the pastor of the church, been going there all, for 30 years. His wife afterwards comes up to us and says, I actually had a dream of this two years ago. I've been praying for my, my husband for years. I had a dream, two missionaries walked into my Chevy dealers, my husband's Chevy dealership, walked him to the gospel, and he gave his life to the Lord. And today's the day. I believe that God wants to position you in places where you walk into dreams that people have had. You walk into visions people have had. And you're not trying to walk into a dream. You're not trying to walk into a vision. You just walk into it. But it's, it's overcoming that fear. So here's the thing. Here's how I'll close. If you want to find a way to partner with us, uh, come find me and Jason if you're in a different place of the nation or if you're here in Texas. Uh, I'm not afraid. I'll give you my information real quick, okay? So if you want my phone number, if you're a pastor or something, uh, I've done this enough where the, I know that people aren't just going to call me off the wall. If you're serious, you're going to call me. And so, uh, so if you're saying, hey, man, I'd love to see this, you can speak to us after service, but I'll also give you my number real quick. Uh, my, my name is Wade, W-A-D-E. Last name is Aaron, A-A-R-O-N. So that's W-A-D-E, Aaron, A-A-R-O-N. And my uh, phone number is 903-570-4757. That is 903-570-4757. I'll say it one last time, 903-570-4757. Also, I'll give you my email, and that is W. Aaron, A-A-R-O-N. So it's W. Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, at time, T-I-M-E, to, T-O, R-E-V-I-V-E, -E, revive. So time to revive.com. So W Aaron at time to revive.com. Shoot me an email if you're saying, hey, we'd love to see this come to our city or we'd like to find some ways to partner. On the back of the Bibles, there are ways to purchase some more of these Bibles if you'd like them at Life Bible Study. Uh, so that's where the bands or the Bibles are located. And so you can use these uh, if you want to purchase them there. Uh, but uh, if you do call me for whatever reason, please leave a voicemail, leave a text, because if I don't recognize your number, I will not call you back. I'm just giving you a full warning. Uh, and so uh, we'd love to partner with you. Come talk to me and Jason afterwards. But I'm going to pray real quick. Uh, so if you're saying, hey, I need, to, I, I, I need to grow in boldness. I need to grow in the, the, the spirit of fear grips my life. If that's you, just stand real quick. I'm going to pray for you. And then we're going to hand this off. So anybody here that says, I need to grow in this thing. I need to break the spirit of fear. All righty. So Jesus, I pray for those who are standing and those that aren't standing. I pray for boldness, God. The righteous are as bold as a lion, God. And so Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you fill people with boldness. You fill them with boldness, God. The righteous, just declare that the righteous are as bold as a lion. The righteous are as bold as a lion. And I tell the spirit of fear to leave right now. The spirit of fear that torments people in this room, God. The spirit of fear to not talk to their neighbor, not talk to their coworker. Break it off, God, and may salvations come. Declaring salvations, God, across this nation, across this city. We declare salvations and family members getting saved in the next week. Amen. So pastor is just asking me just to explain the inside. If you look on the inside, there are some inside uh, verses uh, talking about some uh, Old Testament verses. So uh, like Jason was talking about, a wing of our ministry is focused on Israel. 
We have a team that's trying to witness and share the gospel to Jewish uh, people. How many of you know that the Jewish people are special in God's eyes? Not that we aren't, but we all are, right? But, but there's, a, there's a destiny for that nation and for those people. Hopefully, we're, we're on the same page with that. I'm not going to get into all that. But the reality is, is that these, the Jews do not see the Messiah through the Old Testament. But these five verses highlight Christ throughout. If you look at the yellow one, it just talks about e Ecclesiastes it's and Jeremiah. And in Isaiah 53.5, which a lot of them don't recognize. Leviticus 17.11 is talking about the powers in the blood. There's life in the blood. Um, to Deuteronomy 24, 16, where it talks about making God or only God. And so these five verses on the inside process through the Old Testament. So the ones on the original side are New Testament, and then the others are uh, New Old Testament that walk through the gospel. And so if you have someone that's, for whatever reason, not wanting to read uh, the, the, the New Testament, you can jump to the, the Old with them. And so that's what these verses are. And so it's just a tool for you to use as well. All righty.